Hi everyone, this is my current project located in Manchester on the North End. And with this house, somebody made a mistake of painting over a stained house. So it's been an ongoing process of peeling paint. But the last person that painted this place, he did not prime anything. So none of the paint stuck, so it's peeling everywhere. So what I gotta do is go around and obviously scrape all the paint and sand it. And the primer I'm using is the California Troubleshooter, which in my opinion is the best primer on the market. It's got linseed oil in it and it dries very slowly, so it adheres to the wood very well. It's a fairly large house and it's going to take me a little while to do this, but it's going to come out great. He does not want any of the trim painted, as it does not need it. But as you can see, it's, it's, peeling, every, it's peeling everywhere. Again, it goes to show you how many hacks there are out there. If the person that painted this place 10 years ago would have simply stained it instead of painting it, this would have never happened. It's a very common mistake that some painters do that don't have any experience. They'll look at a house and they think it was painted versus staining, but this house was stained and someone painted over it. And this is what you end up with, a mess. So I'm hoping by scraping and sanding and priming everything that it, it holds longer than the previous guy. This was painted about four or five years ago and it's already a mess. And the problem with painters is they, they see paint that has the primer in it, so they assume that you don't need to prime anything, but you do. But anyway, I'll have some follow-ups as I go along. The scraping is going fairly smoothly. It comes off easy, but it is a lot of work. This top section has been scraped, sanded, and primed already. But before I get too far ahead, I just want to show you that I am power sanding. I'm using my little handy dandy sander here. So I'm scraping and then I'm power sanding to not only smooth the paint out, but to also agitate the wood so the primer soaks and it adheres properly because it is a very expensive slow drying primer. So if you don't sand the, uh, the wood prior, you're just wasting your money. But if you recall that last house in Concord that I just restored, that was a 1786 house. I did not power sand there because it was a lead covered house and lead paint is very poisonous. I don't care if you wear a respirator or an N95 mask, you will get lead poisoning. So do not power sand lead paint. And it just goes to show that uh, all those COVID masks everyone is wearing are 100% pointless. They do not work. Even if I were wearing a COVID mask sanding this stuff, the fine particulates will get through it and they will get in your lungs as I know this as I've been doing this for 20 years so those COVID masks are pointless they really are because the the virus is microscopic and these dust particles are not but anyway enough of that political stuff I'm gonna attempt to this is almost done but I'm gonna attempt to get this side done today also this house is really a mess it really is it's a shame that somebody destroyed it there was a couple bad painters back to back that worked here and they just they had no clue what they're doing what they were doing rather it's just peeling everywhere and it should not be doing that but anyway i gotta get back to it i'm about 15 or 20 feet in the air but anyway as you see in a lot of my videos i always say that the the old homes were built much better than the new ones especially the 1700s, 1800s, and early 1900s buildings because they use real wood and they didn't use plywood or particle board. And as you can see, I'm about 20 feet in the air and this pretty much stays dry. But behind here, this whole wall is rotted. And what happened is the plywood delaminated because plywood's held together by glue. And over time, the glue fails and this is what you end up with. I don't care what anyone says, modern houses will never last over 100 years. This beautiful house in 50 to 60 years from now is just going to be a giant rot box. I never see this on the old houses that I do, at least this high in the air. It's, it never happens. But anyway, I thought I'd show you that.
I'm not sure if the homeowner is going to want me to address this. He may or may not. I'm going to have to ask him. But anyway, back to work. And before I get too far ahead of myself, I'll just give a quick update. I've already scraped, sanded, primed, and caulked the back, the back portions of this house. And as you recall, the previous painter painters did a horrible job. I blame it mostly on the first guy. What happened here was the house was originally a semi-transparent stained clapboard, so it kind of looked natural. And the homeowners wanted a solid color on it. So instead of the first painter buying a solid stain, he decided to paint it. And you cannot paint over raw wood. So if he would have primed this place prior to painting it, it probably would have held paint. But to do it right, he should have just used a solid stain and this, this house would have never peeled. It would have just faded. So now it's just an ongoing issue. Because I guess five, five or six years ago, it was peeling really bad and he had another painter come here to scrape and paint. But the problem is, is after he scraped, he didn't prime anything. He just painted over all the raw wood again. So these poor people have been going through a never-ending nightmare of bad painters. But fortunately, they do have a good one now. But as you can see here, there's a lot of paint that's coming off this building. And this house is not that old. But what I'm doing is obviously I'm scraping the hell out of it, which I always do. And I'm sanding. I'm actually using a power sander here. I always use power sanders. The only time I won't use a power sander is if I'm dealing with lead paint because I do not want lead poisoning. I don't care if you use a respirator or not. The stuff will get into your lungs. But anyway, like I said, I'm sanding everything so you get a nice smooth edge. So everything's kind of feathered in. And, it, and it's also agitating the wood so it exposes the grain. So the California troubleshooting primer that I'm using can soak into it and adhere properly. If I were to just scrape and not sand and prime everything, the primer wouldn't do its job the way it should. It's always it's very important to sand before priming. That's another mistake that a lot of guys do. But other than that, it's coming, coming, it's coming, it's coming along fairly well. I'm having trouble talking here. But everything's kind of damp because we got a lot of a lot of rain this weekend, so I'm not going to prime any of this today. So I'm just going to continue on to the front of the house. The front of the house isn't as bad as the rest of the house but as soon as you get your ladder up there and start scraping you really notice that it's a lot worse than it looks from the ground but anyway I gotta continue on and get this job done and as you can see this is how it's going all the paints it's failing everywhere even up here where it doesn't look that bad as soon as you put a I scrape it to it, it's peeling off like it's uh, it's coming off in like sheets of paper. Even down here, it doesn't look bad, but there's going to be areas where it's just going to, it's going to be a lot of failed paint. The worst of it's in this corner, which I'll get to either tomorrow or Monday. But after today, I should have another day of prep work. And there's also some rot I got to repair, so I have a couple, more, two or three more days before I actually start painting. But, but other than that, it's going very smoothly here. And also, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I always mention that those, anybody that uses those mini rollers are hacks. The previous painter that painted this house, he used one of those rollers on all the trim. So all the trim was rolled. And as you can see, you can see right through it. And it's also got a stipple on it. And it feels like sandpaper, so the trim ends up ends up with this really rough, ugly-looking texture, versus a hand-brushed piece of trim, which always looks a lot better than rolling. So if you're a painter that uses rollers, you are a 100% hack. I don't care what you say or what you think. You can leave comments, as I don't care, because brushing always looks better, and it will last longer, and you cannot see through it. Well, anyway, I thought I'd get that across. Again, I just want to show this one more time. That's my work that I brushed on. The paint is now dry, and as you can see, you cannot see through it, and it's nice and smooth looking, as well as this area here that's dry and it's smooth looking. And this is the area that was hacked with a roller where you can see right through it, and it looks like absolute trash. 
And the previous painter used the same exact paint. He used the Benjamin Moore Regal Select Exterior High Build, which in my opinion is the best exterior paint that you can buy. And it does cover in one coat if you know what you're doing. But obviously this guy was an absolute hack. And also over here, if you recall, this weatherboard here was extremely dirty and full of mold. I did wipe it off. So most of it came off, but it was still very dirty. But as you can see, this paint covers. That's one coat of paint with a brush and you cannot see through it. It's the best paint on the market. Just buy it. That's all I gotta say. There's, there's nothing better. Anything less, you're gonna have to put two coats on it and it'll be twice as much work and you will end up using twice as much paint and paying twice as much money. So just buy the good paint, paint it once, and this is what you get. And I promise that this is the last time that I mention this. But the way the sun is sitting this trim, you can really see what rolling out trim does. See how crappy that looks? That's what you do not want on your house. I've actually had a customer about two summers ago kick a guy off a job after a week. She went on vacation for a week and she came back and the guy destroyed half her house. She ended up kicking him off the job and I completed the rest of the house and she actually took him to court and sued him over this because this is horrible work. Horrible work. But anyway, I thought I'd show you this again. Do not roll trim. Just don't do it. I'm just about done painting all the trim here and as you recall I went around and filled in about 7,000 nail holes because the previous two painters decided not to but by doing that it makes the house look a lot better it makes it look finished anyway and as you recall this house had a lot of peeling issues due to the previous painter that did not prime the old stained clapboard prior to painting you always prime exposed wood before painting especially exterior or you're gonna have serious peeling issues and because he did that even the areas I fixed are probably gonna hold but all the areas that I didn't have to fix are gonna peel over time so this house is gonna have never-ending issues of peeling paint for the rest of its duration unless the paint is stripped off the siding or the house gets recited it's just gonna be a never-ending process but I did the best that I could, and there's nothing else that I could, really could have done. As I used the best materials possible. So the areas that I did will hold paint. But all I have left to do is this bottom area of this porch, and I gotta trim out the front of this, um, this garage here. And I'm starting a house in Goffstown tomorrow. I did post a video of it, it was the hoarder house, and I ended up getting the job. I kinda don't wanna do it, but it's inside work, the house is empty, so I can just go to town. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed.